The North Vietnamese for many years kept the prisoners of war in solitary confinement or two or three to a cell. Thanks to the efforts of millions of Americans, including our veterans, uh, the Vietnamese changed that treatment and moved us from solitary confinement or two or three to a cell to cells with 25 or 30 in each, in each cell. One of the people that moved into the cell with me when I was moved was a young man by the name of Mike Christian. Mike Christian came, a, in, came from a very, very poor family near Selma, Alabama. He didn't wear a pair of shoes until he was 13 years of age. At 17, he, enjoyed, he enlisted in the United States Navy, later became an officer, and later became a bombardier navigator in an A-6 uh, aircraft, and was shot down and captured about a year before I was. Mike had a keen appreciation of the opportunities that service to our country and the military provides. As part of the change in treatment, the Vietnamese allowed us from packages from home that had small articles of clothing or handkerchief or something like that in it. The uniform that we wore in prison was a short sleeve blue shirt, blue trousers that looked like pajama trousers, and uh, sandals that were cut out of automobile tires. Now, I recommend them very highly. One pair lasted me five and a half years. Well, anyway, <coughs> Christian was able to fashion himself a bamboo needle and got a piece of white cloth and a piece of red cloth, and over about a month, he sewed on the inside of his shirt the American flag. Every evening before we would have our bowl of soup, we would put my Christian shirt on the wall of our cell and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, I will freely admit to you, saying the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag and our country is not usually the most important part of our day. I want to tell you in that prison cell, a couple of guys had already been there for seven years, pledging our allegiance to our flag and our country was indeed the most important part of our day. One day the Vietnamese came, searched our cell, found my Christian shirt with the flag sewn inside of it, removed it. That evening they came back, opened the door of the cell, called for him to come out. He did. They closed the door of the cell, and for about the next hour they beat him very severely, after which they opened the door of the cell and threw him back in. The cell in which we lived had a concrete slab in the center of it which we slept, and in each corner of the room a light bulb shone 24 hours a day, rather dimly. Well, we cleaned up Mike as well as we could. You can imagine he was not in great shape. And I went over to lay down uh, on the slab to go to sleep. And as I did, I happened to look over and in the corner of the cell, beneath that dim light bulb, with a piece of white cloth and a piece of red cloth and his bamboo needle and another shirt with his eyes almost shut from the beating that he had received was, of course, my friend Mike Christian sewing another American flag. Mike wasn't sewing that flag because it made him feel better. He was sewing that flag because he knew how important it was to us to pledge our allegiance to our flag and country. I think of Mike all the time, but I also know that there are young men and women who are serving today who are as good, every bit as good or better than Mike and I were. And I'm so proud that we are associated with the best of America who are serving in our, in our nation's armed forces, who are carrying on the noble tradition of a young man from a small town near Selma, Alabama, named, <coughs> named Mike Christian. Thank you very much, and thank you for being with me tonight. Thank you.